Good morning, my friends. Roger, Mud Foster University. Today we're going to collect up a couple of samples of biology that happens to be inside of what I believe is meteorites. Alright, I can't possibly prove that for 100% certain. I didn't see it come out from space, but I do believe these are both meteorites that were scorched off of their biology during entry into our dense atmosphere. Now, why wouldn't they have just completely burnt up into nothing? Well, first of all, they're, they're heavy, full of heavy blood, and you can see that quite easily. All that red stuff. Now, so, and that's what we're going to be harvesting is a little of that red stuff deep inside here. And to that end, we need some tools and so forth. I'm going to just demonstrate, you know, it's, it's really not a hard thing to do. You have to clean everything up good. You need some bleach, you need some rags, you clean everything off really good when you start. A little mask, a couple of, you know, your rubber gloves, just plastic bags. I mean, I'm not talking about any spending any money to speak of. And these are just little plastic bags. You put your names on what they're going to be first, number them and name them, and then once you get your sample, Boop, they go into the bag and that way you don't confuse them. Then what I do is here is um, what, after you get your first, you got to prep it out of here and clean up a good spot. Then drill with a, like a big drill to get sort of an open area and then a small drill inside of that area to get just, just enough of gram or two of stuff. And then fold it up, put it in a plastic bag and off it goes. Now, I'm going to um, just go ahead and do this and more or less show a little bit of it as I do it and uh, that's the process. You don't want to contaminate it, you don't want to get it blow on it or anything like that because you might put some stuff on you do, you know, you just want to take basic precautions. Now if you're doing this outside on a rock that's outside you can't pull it in here which I have had to do. Well, I didn't because of the piece I smashed off the rock I brought back here. But if you wanted to leave that rock intact and take the piece out there, your best bet is to drill like from the side so that you're not on top of it. You drill from the side and let it come out the side, collect it up there. The first stuff you get out, then put a clean slip under and, you know, whatever, however you do it, a tiny drill like this or a little drill, however it is and then clean it up from that little piece. And of course, your gloves and the mask and all that. So, here we go. Now, I just use a bunch of bleach on this and then just wiping it all down nice and clean. Get, get, some, get enough bleach on there to where you're not gonna have any more biology on there. And then, um, We're going to drill into this. All right, you look for the blood, obviously, the best blood you can find, and that's nice red bloody area there. So I'm going to go right from the side in here. That's it, you're done. All right, now, of course, fold this up. into the glassine bag. Make sure you put it in the right bag. You could label this as well. I'm not going to, but you could. And this is going to be from the big number one with the open tip. Now I'm going to do the little one and then we're going to look in the microscope and I'm going to show you where I took these from and you'll see the biology. Alright, so now we're going to look at this one. So now, first of all, let me just go and wipe my hands off from uh, the uh, stuff we just did now. All right, so just be careful, that's all. You know, it's, it's just a matter of taking a little bit of time, take a little bit of caution. Now, this drill 
is no longer going to be used out of the way. And we will grab this one. Now, if you can see, all of this red is, there's a lot of blood in that red. That's not mud. That is blood. So we're going to go into this. Right here. That didn't get in too good. This is a hard, you know, these are hard. When they come through the atmosphere, they come through and they cook. And then they actually turn into actual iron. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's, see, you got to catch one that will open up for you. Whoops. That one there doesn't want to open up. All right, so let's forget that. No. The big chunks best to get those right out of here, not necessary. Alright, same thing here now. Now what they were going to do with this is put it in some kind of a solution, a, a, an aqueous water-based solution probably. I, in my mind, you know, this should be hit with a little bit of acid. Now that's not my side of it. I send it off to the lab, they do what they do. But um, these things, what happens is Blood metals do something that's called chelation. And that means that they get surrounded by little bitty, see this is a small one, and they get surrounded by little bitty molecules that protect them. They keep them protected. That's how come this blood stays protected. It's called um, transition metal complexes. All right, so you got the metal thing right in the center, the, the metal part, and then it gets all surrounded by these other things, and it turns it into a ball, and it's called sequestration. It, it keeps that, hold on, it keeps that, um, it keeps, keeps the metal inside isolated, and the metal inside, I believe, contains the hemoglobin and all the rest, because it's a ferrous oxide, a metal uh, iron oxide. So anyway, that's your side of it though is just to do what I just showed you to do. Do it carefully. And we're gonna build, you know, I my friend who has um, these labs, he has 26 different labs that I guess they send all around the country to investigate CDC complaints of this and that or whatever. You know, he, he, they do bacterial analysis of outbreaks and things. And uh, he actually offered to send a lab here for me to do this, but it's just too complicated for me to do. I can get this much done. The rest, I, I just don't have time for that. But uh, these people know what they're doing. These aren't just theoretical people. It's, oh, we're guessing at this, guessing at that. No. This guy has PhDs. He's got more degrees than a thermometer. And they're all in things that are actual true things, engineering, chemistry, bacterial, um, all this business. I mean, it's it, it actual pleasure to talk to this guy. I mean, absolute pleasure. And he's going to start a university for me within his own accredited university. So this is not going to be some joke university. This is going to be a real, true, investigative university with the ability to test the things that, the statements that I've been making. You know, I've had it tested already, the DNA, I've had three DNA tests, I've had CAT scans done, I've had anatomists verify it, I've done the chemistry, I've done the recreation of the process, and now I need to get this, this handled. And, and, and I need to, somebody to step up, which has not happened from the academic arena, and I applaud my friend, who, he contacted me, I didn't reach out to him. So this was a, a, an extreme effort on his part to overcome his programming. And I, did, you know, we've talked extensively and very, very wonderful conversation, really. Because he has no, knows everything. The problem is, is with the PhDs that 
are theoretical PhDs or even PhDs that have one specific ability. They are just lost everywhere else. I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing. They they are so dominated by their peers that they just they they have no ability to stand up against them because they all have an opinion that is is absolutely wrong. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, and they're going to stick to it no matter what. And they will not speak to you unless you speak the language they speak and, and, and bow down to their PhD-ness, which I will never do and my friend will never do. Because he knows, and he's already above them, so he doesn't have to bow down to anybody. They already have to bow down to him. So he's now saying to him, you straighten your act out and get it together because you people are making yourself look like fools and you're making all PhDs look like fools. I told him this right straight out. I said, you are the most fortunate PhD I've ever met because you took physical material sciences. Otherwise, all to me right now, PhD is, is, a, is a symbol of disgrace. I, I, for years and years and years, not one single response. I told him this. I said, I can't believe you've contacted me. And he was also kind of taken back by it because he's a, a scientific guy. He, he expects people to look into this, but, you know, I, I shouldn't be even talking about this because it's, it makes me see, seem bitter, but I, get, I guess I am a little bitter because, you know, I've done this five, four or five years ago. I had these DNA tests in my hands, the specimens. Everything was done. And not a single, and Yale was the one that really pushed back. Professor Briggs at Yale was the one that just slam the door on us in my mind and I know that's a fact so you can take it any way you want anyway that's the story and he told me to go see if I could find somebody who understood rocks and now I have Professor Briggs thank you so much for your interest because otherwise if you'd have taken an interest <laughs> it would have never come out right I know you're saying this guy must be crazy. How's he talking about blood inside of a meteorite? Well, how about exhibit A? This is a meteorite, and that is the vein blood, and that is the arterial red blood. And I can almost guarantee you that there will be some remnant of DNA in that. Now, all of this crystallization and patterning and so forth is from the uh, acid etching, but there's still more blood remnants here and there. You see this? This is supposed to be the oldest solid material in the solar system. That's, that's the blood in the uh, artery in the vein coming out of space. That's chondrules. Those are the, uh, those are the interstitial balls. There's a gigantic lung. Now, th this brings up the point. The lungs and the hearts turn into almost solid iron because they are literally iron to begin with. There's a 100% blood virtually. That's what the lung and the hearts and lungs do. They push blood around. They collect it, they pump it, and they distribute it. Alright, there's basically the same thing. It's an iron meteorite that, well, I don't know if it's a meteorite, that, um, but it could be. Actually, it could be. I don't know, I'm thinking about it. Anyway, uh, it's a tiny little lung, and um, and it's now iron. And that one there is not tiny, but it is now iron. And that is the red signatures of blood in it. And that is the red signatures of blood in this one. I mean, it's just, it's what it is, what it is.